the center of our world lies the Middle East, and at its very heart, the ancient land which is Iraq. Two great rivers span its length, the Tigris and Euphrates. In the plain, made rich and fertile by their waters, the earliest civilizations known to man were born. Out of this ancient heritage, the citizens of one of the world's youngest nations are building a new life and a modern state. Ageless Iraq is no longer a remote, isolated country. Today, she is a main junction linking the east and west. Her capital is Baghdad name that conjures up all the romance of Harun al-Rashid and the Arabian Nights of a thousand years ago, when this was the fabulous capital of the Islamic world. The tempo of an age-old way of life contrasts with the swifter rhythm of the new. The 20th century has come to Baghdad steel and concrete, with shining cars and wide streets. But the people of Iraq hold on to the best of their old traditions. In the bazaars, you can see and hear them carrying on the art and exquisite craftsmanship that has been their pride for hundreds of years. Two thousand years before Christ, the world's first code of justice was laid down in the halls of Babylon. Today, in Baghdad, a modern police force upholds the laws of a sovereign state. the streets of the city are alive with the bustle of a young people who are taking back from the West the means to a brighter future. And in their enjoyment of sport, the same is true. From three Arab stallions brought to England over 200 years ago, every thoroughbred has been sired. Today, their descendants run on every race course in the West. And now, in the 20th century, the sport of kings has come into its own in Baghdad, and how the people love it. For the people of Iraq, the waters of the two great rivers, Tigris and Euphrates, are indeed the waters of life. All through history, this land has drawn its food, its whole existence, from these two waterways. Between the twin rivers, so legend says, was the world's first garden, the Garden of Eden. And here there is still the miracle of the water. With water, man has made the desert green with grain and vegetables, rich with spices and dates for all the world. Without the water of the two great rivers, and without the skill that makes them serve the land, much of Iraq would be a desert. Only in the mountains and valleys of the north is there enough rain and snow to help the farmers cultivate their fields. Here, the life of the Kurdish tribes, farmers and hunters all, still follows an age-old pattern set by the sun and the changing seasons. When you visit one of their villages, you begin to remember Jacob and his flocks and Rebecca at the well.
The men are already in the fields, tending the vines, watering the crops, as they have done from the time of Abraham, pausing only to offer a prayer to God for his goodness. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Adwan la ilaha illallah. Adwan la ilaha illallah. Adwan na Muhammadan Rasulullah. Adwan na Muhammadan Rasulullah. Ayya ala salah. Ayya ala in Iraq, as in every land, the housewife's work is never done. For their husbands, the day's work over, there is time to sip a glass of tea and talk of what the future holds in store for them and their children. But with the coming of spring and the sowing of the seed, all become young again and rejoice. mountains of the north where the waters rise, down across the central plains to the burning heat of the Persian Gulf, where the twin rivers join in the Shat al Arab. Here lies the great port of Basra, at the crossroads of the world's trade. For generations, seafaring men have made this their port of call, and the fables of Sinbad the sailor were based on the stories they told. Today, the modern port of Basra is Iraq's waterway to the world. Ships laden with the goods of the new age sail out from the Persian Gulf to the Indian Ocean and the Far Orient. And the skies over Basra are thronged with the traffic of the air. Now I have your attention, And yet, within a few minutes' flying time of Basra, is a strangely different world. You're back in another age. Here, amid lakes and marshes, water has created a way of life all its own. life well suited to these strange surroundings and at the same time a living reminder of that remote past when men settled by these waters to found the first great cities known to man. <laughs> 